Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video, it's uh, personal stories. I've been asked by many of my uh, subscribers, could you give us some of your personal stories? Well, here's two. Tales from the morgue, tales from the mortuary. You see, as a police officer anywhere in the world, you have to deal with the horrible side of life. And when I was a British Bobby, one of my jobs was deputy coroner's officer. I used to deal with the dead. Um, sometimes just routine, but other times terrible. Uh, road traffic accidents, fatalities, or even worse. And on one of those occasions, I had to attend a death. I'm not going to go into details, but by the time we'd recovered the body, I was in a bit of a state. I needed to be cleaned up. So the paramedics who were with me says, hey, let's go to the local mortuary, you can clean up there, no problems at all. So great, I radio in, I'm going with the body down to the local mortuary and we book in. And the mortuary attendant goes, oh gosh, PC Hicks, yeah. I said, yeah, can I go and use your washroom? Yes, please do. And when I finished, I came out, I was pretty decent, I suppose. And uh, I then had to wait for a lift and the mortuary attendant says, uh, instead of hanging around here, because there was bodies everywhere, why don't you get down into the old Victorian part of the mortuary, have a mooch around, it's really interesting. So I, I yeah, all right then, I've never been to this particular mortuary. And with me was the paramedic who'd attended the scene of this terrible accident. And the two of us go down this narrow passageway. And it was like something from Sherlock Holmes or Jack the Ripper, cobbled stones on the road there. and archways of brick and it's a little bit dark and I'm thinking where are we going and believe it or not in the corner was the old Victorian body cart yeah with the big wagon wheels and I'm thinking wow I'm going back in time well we end up in I don't know the back of the mortuary where they've got these great big um, fridges where they keep the dead and being who we were we just had to have a look inside and there's like a bank of doors and we open the one door and there's feet pointing out and tags on the end of the feet. And so we open another door and there's feet pointing out and tags on the feet. And there's a big notice on the door which says, heading first, feet pointing out. So we open another door and there's rows of feet of all these unfortunate souls and tags on each other. And we get to the end door and we open it and it's feet, feet, head feet. Why has he been put in the wrong way around? What's going on here? Now there's not much gap in between the bodies because they don't need to breathe. They're dead. But I want you to read the notice on the chest of this unfortunate person. So I lean in and then I notice that the paramedic is also leaning in and we're getting very close to this dead body when all of a sudden, bang! Unbeknown to me, right next to my head was a massive fan, a propeller. We'd gone through all of the doors and we brought the temperature up and the thermostat cut in and the cooling fan the size of an aeroplane exploded into action. Well, what happened to me was quite funny because I leapt so high into the air, the paramedic actually caught me as he was running away. We didn't stop until we got back into the modern mortuary. Our hearts are pounding. But then we had to go all the way back in to shut the door. Lesson learned. If you're going to be nosy and have a look in the cool storage where the dead do lie, don't leave the doors open because you will be in for a surprise. So another tale from the morgue, the mortuary if you like. To try and lighten our load, we would play up. We would. Uh, I remember a, a lady saying to me, look at that miserable policeman's face. And I says to her, what's he just done? She said, what do you mean? I said, has he just dealt with the most horrendous death and he's just coming back out on duty? In my day, you didn't have um, therapy or anything like that. You dealt with the blood on the road or the murder and you were back out on the streets within an hour. So we used to, you know, let some of the steam off by playing each other up. I mean, one incident, just a simple thing, uh, some policemen had found a mannequin, just a, a shop mannequin, 
and they floated it on the local lake, the local village pond, and uh, radioed oh, somebody floating face down in the lake. And a young WPC, a female police officer, saw it, hitched her skirt up straight away, and she waded straight into the lake. Policemen don't run from danger. Not my kind of policeman. We run to it. And this young WPC was doing that. And she waded and she's almost swimming in the end. And when she grabs the body and finds it's a mannequin, she's furious, absolutely furious. And one of the policemen who set it up made a mistake. He hung around and he's laughing and she punched him right in the nose. And it was a good punch because it knocked him out. Well done, young lass. This is the kind of things that policemen will get up to if you leave us alone for too long. And my favorite story, now I was on the edge of this, yeah, is, and it's been repeated many times by other police officers in other forces, and it's to do with the mortuary. Now our local mortuary, it was, uh, <laughs> it was old. Now the fridges where you put the bodies in, it was nothing like Hollywood. I love these Hollywood ones where you open the door, it's all this nice, pristine clean, and out comes this drawer with a person in it and so no we weren't like that ours with a series of doors that went all the way along and it's one big fridge behind it so if you've got 40 bodies in it they're all in the same room they're not separated so what we did was we persuaded a new police officer it's what you call a probationary officer to get in the fridge and the way you do it is quite easily you persuade them that you're playing a joke on Somebody else, get in the fridge, cover you over with a sheet. When we bring the drawer back out, you simply rise up woo, and you will frighten the other probationer. Yeah, okay, so we did it. And we got a young chap and we lay him in and he's asking us all these questions. I'm not going to worry, you are going to get me out, aren't you? I said, yeah, of course we are, don't be silly. Yeah, and all these kind of things. And uh, covered him over with a sheet and we closed the door. And he expected us to open the door in a few minutes, but we didn't. We left him in there, not for too long, but long enough. You see, his nose is almost touching the metal stretcher above him, and these fridges are open inside. They are not actual, just little cupboards. And he's lying there, waiting and wondering, when a hand from the body next to him came over and touched him and said, cold in here, isn't it? It was another policeman. But the probationer, unfortunately, was panicking and was headbutting. <laughs> we had to open the door and drag him out because the noise that he was making in there frightened everybody else. He never forgave us. He never forgave us an inch. But boy, did we laugh. Gallows humour. Well, I hope you enjoyed those stories from the morgue. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And try to remember to turn on the notifications. That way you know what's coming next. Now, I've got some more stories to tell you in the future. But before I do, a shout out to some of my Patreon members. Uh, Jake Kahn, Daryl and Erin Pratt and their children, Ethan and CJ. Hey, guys. Thanks a bunch.